Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back to uh, BFW 2401, week uh, six, and this is part three. So I'll just, in this part, we are talking about the bank run and the financial stability and the uh, other um, liquidity uh, risk and other financial institutions other than banks. Okay, so um, let me go to this first which is the bank run. Now the bank run, I want you to look at it from the following point. How it comes to the causes of the bank run. Bank run is a very, very, uh, it's been the pre class activity uh, was about bank run. So we need to understand how, what are the causes usually, and then how it leads to the, to the bank run. And actually this is actually associated with the, type of contracts we have with banks as depositors. So the causes, there must be, it starts like this, concerns about customers or other banks, solvency to another bank. Um, now the failure to, or the failure of a related bank, for example, um, you have these huge banks um, and groups, um, who, um, take for example, one of the biggest banks, uh, they have an insurance, company, they have uh, uh, another businesses, they have uh, in militia, for example, each group have investment bank, have Islamic bank, have insurance company. It's a group conglomerates uh, and big groups. Now, in this case, if um, one of those small, one of those, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the group companies fail, uh, people will not actually look at it is failed with very independent uh, uh, financial uh, position, but they will talk about the group. So if my bank Islamic, for example, failed, uh, they will say, well, it will come like bank, um, you know, uh, my bank already failed. Uh, so it happens like this. It's a failure of a related bank. This will bring some type of contingent risk, which means the risk not only is, uh, you know, um, spread to May Bank, it will be coming to the parent and it will also go to other banks uh, uh, in the country. Now this will lead to sudden change and or maybe it comes another cause, maybe a sudden change in investor preferences. Now with the development of the financial markets, customers and big customers sometimes decide to withdraw their deposits. They don't want to put their deposits in the bank they decide to go and trade in the market directly in the citizens deposits. If this is happening like a trend, and this is a big you know, a group of big investors where they withdraw a lot of money, then in this case, that will lead to liquidity problem. Maybe the bank cannot pay all the money in one time. This will lead the bank lead to bank runs. And what is the bank run actually? When this news, all of those news, you know, um, accumulated and the head of the depositors, um, especially if there is some news talking about it or maybe informal news, uh, you know, uh, then in this case, you, you can talk about social media now. Social media have, you know, failed so many banks recently in many countries in the world, including US and, and in Europe. Uh, and sometimes those rumors are not right. So this will lead to a sudden and unexpected increase in deposit withdrawals. Now, this might force the bank into solvency because even the central bank in this case cannot help you. Central bank can help you before to manage, but when 80% or 90% come to the bank to withdraw their money in the same moment, it's all over. And if it is all over, central bank will take over and then they will start to liquidate the bank and distribute uh, the, the, the funds among the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, the depositors. Now, when it comes to this distribution of the funds, this is what the problem happens. Because the, this is the main cause of the bank run. The, 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 the nature of the deposit is who comes first, receive first. And therefore, if there is a bank run, what do you do? You run first. This is the normal thing to do. Because if you are late, the, and the money finished and the, you know, the, uh, you know the, the person just in front of you in the queue, 
whether you are queuing online or queuing in a physical bank uh, and the money is finished, it's finished. The, whoever comes first will receive 100%. When the money is finished, the second person will receive zero. And this is why people actually run to queue. So depositors are actually paid in full until bank has no fund left. Uh, and this is why it caused a bank run. So depositors who come last will not receive a full amount or nothing at all. Now, the regulator, uh, regulators, for the sake of this financial instability and preventing what we call financial instability, they provide something called deposit insurance. And this deposit insurance is actually a scheme. It was, you know, started in the long time, but was clearly after the global financial crisis where most countries started to, to adopt it because the, the financial crisis was actually a liquidity risk. So it's a guarantee of deposit. This is what they do. They ask you, and in this country, we have PDIM. In the US, they have FDIC. Now those actually um, are different um, you know, uh, uh, organizations and bodies that actually like insurance companies, they receive uh, premiums from the banks and they insure them if there is any problem. So here in Australia, in the United States, they pay uh, retail depositors up to 250,000 if there is a problem. And therefore, this is one of the things, which means if you know that there is a deposit insurance and somebody will, will pay you up to 250 and most of us don't have 250, then we don't have to run. This is how you can you know, manage the run, a bank run and kill it by, by not really kill it, but uh, you know, mitigate it, decrease it, or maybe eliminate it. So uh, it's a guarantee of deposits, insurance type protection. It's a protection. Uh, many countries, including Malaysia, Australia, US have already adopted. The other thing that the central bank can do discount window, which means they provide facilities uh, to meet banks short term. So you can go and bring all your securities, give it to them, they will buy it. If you start feeling some you know, liquidity stress, you can go and sell all your assets, but maybe you don't need to sell them. So you sell it under what you call repurchase agreement. They all take it from you. And then later on, uh, they will give it to you back and a larger price and, and a higher price. But that's fine because you already solved your liquidity problem. Now, um, they can do what we call discounting facilities um, and purchase agreement, as I told you. This is all central banks do. Um, they also provide, as I told you, the, the short term and then permanent liquidity needs. So this is the repo, the, the repo uh, which I just uh, explained it here. It's here, the repo is here. And this is another windows which they can provide, uh, you know, short term uh, liquidity. So this is, uh, and this you have to, um, you know, uh, go to the, you know, deal with the central bank before the bank run happens. When the bank run happens, they will not finance you 90% and 80% of your, uh, of your, uh, what you call of your uh, uh, deposits, because 80% are uh, lining up uh, or queuing up. Uh, so this is, you know, you have to manage it when the problem started to appear a little bit. Now, this is just uh, some explanation about what I just said. Um, this is just the slides. Uh, I want you to look at this one. And this one is actually, will be discussed in the tutorials. Measuring deposit drains. And this is, we do, we do it in daily basis. In each base, in each day, this is when we model actually liquidity because we can, we can model liquidity Based on this, we take deposit withdrawals minus deposit additions, and we see if the number is plus, then we are not okay because the withdrawals, which is the plus, more than the deposit additions. If the number is minus, means or the average, because when we do this, we do it in daily and in, in, in annual basis. If you want to, for example, the uh, model the liquidity, you can take all this, make it in a normal distribution and see the mean. And in the mean or the average, they will tell you whether it's plus or minus. If it is plus, means the bank 
is actually dropping in terms of size and the deposit withdrawals during the year was more than the deposit additions. If it is minus means the bank is growing and the size of the bank is growing because the deposit additions, which is the liability side is increasing. And of course the assets are increasing. So the size of the bank is increasing. So it is minus means the bank is growing. If it is plus means the bank is actually shrinking. Now this, we already talked about deposit insurance, deposit discount. Let's come to the financial stability. So the, the responsibility, actually, the role of the regulator of government of the central bank is to, they have responsibility and to, to be sure that the, there is, you know, uh, you know they uh, uh, eliminate the uh, financial crisis that are sufficiently um, serve to threaten the health of the economy. So they don't want to see any financial crisis. This is one of their responsibilities. So they implement policies to prevent the financial instabilities. And I told you the tools, they can use balance sheets to provide their balance sheets, which means they make open market operations. Uh, open market operations mean, um, you know, they intervene in the short term money market. Uh, uh, to affect uh, uh, interest rate. So they, they actually, um, uh, they buy and sell those government securities with which are short term. And they also sell their, uh, you know, they affect the liquidity uh, with buying and selling, um, you know, uh, the, here they just decrease or increase their government security rates. Here, actually, they buy and sell, they buy, they either, either they issue government securities and, um, you know, bonds and what you call uh, uh, CGS. CGS in Australia, it is actually Commonwealth government securities, which is government securities. Here, you can say it's government bonds. In the US, they call it uh, treasury bonds. So this one actually will decrease the, uh, the liquidity because they can shrink all the liquidity and um, let all the people buy it and all the financial institutions buy it. If they want to you know, increase the liquidity, they just um, uh, go and buy themselves the dust government securities and you know, put more cash in the market. Now we talked about other financial institutions and we talk about life insurance companies, general insurance and managed fund. I think you know what life insurance. So life insurance, just imagine what would, you know, what will be the worst thing to them that affect their cash because they receive some type of an installment during the life of the uh, policy holder um, during his life. And he wants just to insure it against if he, de if he dies before a certain age. So in this case, um, if they cancel, the insurance policies, that means there will be no more uh, cash coming during the life of this, of this policy holder. So cancellation, it could be a problem, cancellation, or maybe there is too much debt in some type of age, and you know, they have to cash the, uh, you know, the policy, and the, when you cash the policy, you are talking about millions. So that actually, if you have so many people, uh, you know, passing in the same time for one reason or the other, this will actually make, uh, you know, um, a very pre, uh, high pressure on their liquidity. Now the general insurance is what? The general insurance is just the normal insurance like fire insurance, like the car insurance, like the travel insurance. When we go travel from the country to country, this is, um, they make some type of insurance for us. We call it general insurance. Now the policy holder may uh, cancel or fail to renew the policies. Talk about loan, you know, car loans or whatever, or maybe some type of regulations where they don't ask people to make some type of insurance for the cars. Maybe they have some type of other schemes that will create a problem. Or it will be a large unexpected claims. And this may be because of some type of, maybe you have earthquakes, maybe you have, you know, disaster, where you'll be very, you know, tornadoes, huge damage for, uh, you know, uh, businesses and houses and individuals. 
and all of those are insured. So they come and they cash and they will receive all this. Um, so it exceed uh, the flow of the cash coming and because they are cashing all those you know, claims, then they are in liquidity problem. This is how the uh, general insurance problem. So the managed fund is different. We have closed end funds and we have open end funds. The closed end fund is actually, they sell only a fixed number of shares to outside investors. And this is, they sell a listic, you know, um, just a flexible number of shares in the fund to outside investors. Um, so nothing to say here, except um, if you look at the recent events that have affected general insurance, it was the bushfire and flood in Australia. That was in 1989. We have earthquake in New Zealand, 2010, Japan, 2011. And you have this recent earthquake in, in New Zealand. Now let's talk about the managed fund. Managed fund, whether you are talking about the closed end funds, which they sell fixed number, or the open, which they sell non-fixed number. Uh, their you know, liquidation is different from banks. Banks have bank run. And this type of institutions, if there is a liquidation and the investors want to invest, uh, actually to liquidate the fund, they will tell them, everybody wait. They sell all the assets and they distribute the assets on the all investors equally according to their um, you know, uh, participation, for example. If the fund is 100 million and one investor holds 10 million, which is 10%, and then liquidation come. When they liquidate and they sell all the asset, they sell it for 80 million, which means 80% of the total assets of the funds. Now, when you come and distribute proportionally to everyone, this investor who have a 10 million now will not receive 10 million. He will receive only 8 million and you can you know uh, compare this to other investors uh, i am done in this part it's the smallest one thank you very much and i will just uh, see you in the next part thank you